<laughs> Welcome YouTubers. I'm about to tie a steelhead fly that will also work for trout. It'll probably work for almost anything you throw it at. Uh, redfish, tarpon, you never know. But it, it can look like this. It's tied on a hook shank. Uh, what is it? It is a uh, it's a egg-eating sculpin steelhead fly. That's what I'm calling it. Um, it's summer steelhead, winter steelhead, uh, spring steelhead, fall steelhead. Just a real nice buggy pattern uh, that you could probably fish uh, Montana and Wyoming for uh, browns too. So let's get started here. So I've got some olive woolly bugger marabou. And I want the tail on this to be nice and short. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna um, cut. Sometimes I cut the center out. And it looks just a little bit nicer that way. So I'm just I'm just fiddling with this to kind of measure it. I don't want it to be longer than the hook shank. So there I've got it measured. I'll trim the extra off. And I just do a light pinch wrap. Come over once. And now I'm secure there. And now I'm going to bring my thread forward. This is a fairly simple fly. I always cringe when people talk about simple flies to tie because I find, you know, even a fly like this, I have to, um, to tie a number of times to really feel like I'm getting my tails right and getting my hackles right and getting the right amount, you know, material to seat the bead behind the bead. But, th but this is pretty fundamental. Now, now, when would I fish this? I said something about summer steelhead, winter steelhead. I'm not really being glib. Might seem that way. But um, we, are, we are so enamored of black and blue in our flies that we very often overlook the browns, the olives, the tans, which are indeed really good steelhead colors. They're good, tr they're good trouty colors too, but they're also good steelhead colors. This is a Senyo's Fusion Dub. I think that's crust, I think it's crusty nail. Um, now, if 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 you if you wanna if you wanna believe that this is imitating something, you're you're welcome to. And I'll say it's imitating a little sculpin that's chewing on an egg that it's found floating down the river. And that's probably uh, a little bit presumptuous to say that. But. Olive is just a good steelhead color. For my hackle, I'm going to use um, I'm going to use one of these. It's a tan grizzly feather, and, and we got this from uh, one of these grizzly marabou saddle patches. I could use olive, but I like to I like to go with the olive tail crusty nail body and the tan hackle. You think about the fly, the old burlap fly. Um, there are a lot of flies that are, um, well, I know I'm rambling, but I've been out on the North Umpqua fishing really not my finest black and blue intruders and had one of my very dear friends come along behind me and uh, clean up. I think that's going to be, I don't want too much, I don't want too many turns. Clean up behind me, fishing a brown wet fly. The brown wing and a brown tail and a brown body. 
So the point is, sometimes the fish will actually prefer something that looks more natural. Now, I, I could just whip finish that right there, but I, I want to pack a little bit of extra material in here because I want to make sure that my my bead is nice and firm. There we go. So whether the steelhead actually thinks this is a sculpin or a stonefly chewing on an egg, it really isn't important. What is important is that it combines the features of a very nice size, nice color hues with that nice, nice pink uh, trigger point. Uh, this is the winner. You can fish this any time of year and have high expectation of catching a steelhead. And I know if you try it, you'll have fun tying this fly. Thank you for joining us.